Okay, so now we're going to talk about the media, which is a fun topic to take to address. So first, it's important to note, freedom of the press and an independent media are important dimensions of a liberal society and a necessary part of a healthy democracy. You know, Thomas Jefferson said, no government ought to be without censors. And where the press is free, no one ever will. So as we talked about when we talked about civil liberties, you know, this First Amendment right to these freedoms, it's a tension. And we have to balance that tension between, you know, the need to promote you know, information versus, you know, fake news, which we have now a lot nowadays. But first, we got to figure out what is the media. Media is a number of different communication formats from television to print. So the collection of all forms of media that communicate information to the public is called the mass media. This includes television, print, radio, and the internet. We expect the media to cover important political and social events in a concise and neutral manner. I would argue to you, are they really neutral? The work of the news media differs from public relations, which is communication designed to improve the images of companies, organizations, or candidates. Public relations is not neutral because you're working for an individual. So there is a way that we can actually check to see if we have an unbiased news. I'm going to do a resume. Sorry, let's do a new share. So here I am sharing all sides. Yes, we're sharing all sides. So all sides is a website where I can look at you know, the economy. You can pick any kind of issue and it's kind of like, it's called an aggregator. So what it does is it ranks different articles about these issues as being from the center, from the left, or the right. So you can see, you know, the Epoch Times is a, is a you know, is a moderately right-leaning article. New York Times is moderately left. And then South China Morning Post somehow is center. So you can use this when you're trying to see, you know, hey, is this bias? A lot of times it is bias. PowerPoint. So what does the media do? So the media exists to fill a number of functions, um, whether it be a newspaper, a radio broadcast, or a television newscast. There's some corporation behind the scenes that must bring in revenue to pay for production. The medias are also watchdogs of society and of public officials. The media, you know, they're the group that can initiate investigations into, into public corruption. They can spread awareness. Sometimes the media is called the fourth estate, with the branches of the government being the first three estates, because the media helps maintain democracy and keeps the government accountable for its action. It's all like me who studies public administration and government accountability. You know, yes, the media, it has its purposes. But I would also argue to you that we need to have as neutral as possible the media, because a lot of times if it's, you know, politicized, into one you know, side or the other, we're not gonna get the true story. So people were asked, where do you get your news? Um, they don't have TikTok on here, which I think is interesting because usually when I teach this class, a majority, at least of the younger students, get their information from TikTok, which is I'm okay with so long as it's like ABC News TikTok or Reuters. Or it's, a, it's a news source and not just someone like me who can get some really cool lights going on behind me screaming that there is Aliens on Kathleen Street in Riverside that someone will believe. Nowadays, we, we have too many you know, instances where someone can generate news that is fake news, especially you know, in the today's you know, media-driven age. I tried to find it, but someone used AI to create a video of Joe Biden saying he was instituting the draft and sending soldiers to Russia. It was AI. Think about the panic. If you just saw that on TikTok, I would hope you would check it. You know, right? Let's be educated, but it happens. So the media also engages in what's called agenda setting because it's choosing what to put on the news. So, you know, what deserves the attention of the public? There's so many different things. You can call in any tip you want to the news and see whether or not they actually run with it. So before the internet, 
traditional media determined whether citizen photographers or video footage would become news. It's not like now where you can, you know, Snapchat's interesting. But I've seen it used before when there's incidents going on around the world where I can isolate, you know, that location and it will show me what people are uploading. You know, think about World War II, think about, you know, prior to technology where it was the professional photographer who, you know, created news. And the news cycle was also back then, was it took, you know, it took time for material to get over here to the United States, whereas now things are instantaneous. So the media also promotes the public good, by like gives a platform a platform for public debate and improving citizen awareness. They tell you about national news, elections, and what's going on internationally, which is important for us to be aware of. So your age generally says how you're going to get your news. So the millennials, born in the early 80s to early 2000s, and Generation X, those are the 1960s and 80s, are most likely to get news and information from social media, such as YouTube and Twitter. Twitter is a good starting point, but I would urge you to do your, your, your research. Baby boomers, you know, from the night born in the 1940s to early 60s, get, usually get their news from TV. You know, one thing on Twitter, every now and then you'll see World War III trending. That doesn't mean World War III has started, so I really hope you do your checking. So here's some history of the news. Back in the day, you know, when we first became a country, they had to get their news with the printing press. But then after the Revolutionary War, there was a change that occurred and the nation moved into the party press era, in which partisanship and political loyalty dominated the choice of editorial content. We had original political cartoons. Between 1830 and 1860, we had machines come up and manufacturing that made the production of newspapers faster and easier. We could get more information out, and more news out. Then we had radio. Radio, you know, comes up in the 1920s, you know, it brought communications to rural America. This gave us a new way to reach the public in a personal way. You hear that voice. You know, World War II changed the radio news forever. There was a need and desire for frequent updates about the war. And this made newspapers with the once a day printing too slow. You know, people wanted to know what was happening. They wanted to know it immediately. But with the radio, I also encourage you, you know, like I said, we live in the era of, you know, where there's issues with fake news, you know, how do we censor that and keep a free speech? Think of the idea of War of the Worlds, that radio play by Orson Welles, where some people it could cause mass panic because they thought he was actually broadcasting news when it was fiction. So there's interesting things to consider when evaluating news. So then we have television come, and you know that was changed media forever. It was huge. We had radio, you know, video and audio. The first official broadcast in the U.S. was President Franklin Roosevelt's speech at the opening of the 1939 World's Fair. So it, you could connect even deeper because before you couldn't see the president or the candidate. You just could hear them. Now you can actually personify the person. So the president often uses television to reach citizens and gain support for policies and to inspire and comfort the populace during emergencies. So what kind of trends do we see in the news? So the introduction of cable and the expansion of the internet, we have so much information. There's alternatives to watching network news and we can avoid politics altogether if we choose. So social media is one of the biggest things that have really transformed the country. And it was one of the successful, you know, election campaign of President Obama, one of the primary factors. Because that's how citizens gain the information. So the availability of the internet and social media has moved, apologize for the alarms, moved some control of the message back into the hands of the president and candidates. Politicians can now connect to the electorate directly by passing journalists. I like to watch something you know, as it's happening and make my own conclusions rather than hear what the news wants me to say. So like in social media with Facebook, citizen journalists can capture things as it happens and post them. Many a time, if you really explore Twitter, when people are posting videos, every now and then you'll see a comment from a producer from some news station saying, hi, I'm a producer, can I use your footage? So preferred programming that is humorous attracts younger viewers and has demonstrated that news can win young viewers if delivered well. This is kind of soft news. You know, yeah, but we do still gotta deal with some you know, kind of negative things. 
So we have forms of news coverage bias. So bias is inherent in the news. How do we, how does the news frame the creation of a narrative? So there's you know, episodic framing that occurs when a story focuses on isolated details or specifics rather than broadly looking at the whole issue. There's thematic framing, which takes a broad look at an issue and skips the member or details. There's racial framing that occurs when a person or group is represented in a negative or subjective light. And then there's priming. So priming is when media coverage predisposes the viewer or reader to a particular perspective on a subject or issue. So I want you to think about how you see this. So the media chooses what they want to discuss. This is agenda setting, and it creates a reality for voters and politicians. So example regarding racial framing. The survey respondents were shown a story of a white unemployed individual. 71% listed unemployment as one of the top three problems facing the US. When respondents were shown a story of a, of a black unemployed individual, only 53% listed unemployment as a top problem. How is framed. And we do have government oversight. Like I said, think of the Orson Welles, right? We have to have some kind of regulation, but we still have to respect that person and their right. So the media and the FCC regulations. So liberties enjoyed by newspapers are overseen by the court system. So if it's something important, mostly don't do litigation. But if television and radio broadcasters, they're monitored by the courts and the FCC. Okay. The FCC enforces ownership limits to avoid monopolies and censors material deemed inappropriate. That's going to be an interesting thing to, to discuss because what is inappropriate? It has no jurisdiction over print media, mainly because print media are purchased and not broadcast. Because print media, right, you have to, it's static. So the FCC also maintains indecency regulations over television, radio, and other broadcasters, which limit content considered indecent and keep the public airwaves free of obscene materials. So, you know, every now and then you hear if someone has a wardrobe incident, you know, the FCC regulates it. So the equal time rule states that registered candidates running for office must be given equal opportunities for airtime and advertisements at non-cable television and radio stations, beginning 45 days before a primary election and 60 days before the general. I encourage you kind of check out this election cycle, see if that really happens. And finally, we have exceptions to freedom of the press. Slander and libel. This is defamatory statements that cause harm. The media does not have a right to commit slander or libel. So for that, they have to know that it was, it was false and still go on with publishing it. That it's actionable and can cost a lawsuit, which can be very expensive. You know, recently they had the settlement between Fox News and Dominion, the voting system, because of Tucker Carlson saying, hey, you know, I think they, you know, the machines are compromised. Also on Tucker Carlson, just to kind of, you know, look, right now he is changing the way that media is done. You know, he got fired from Fox News, and now he is publishing to X. I don't know if you call it a tweet or an X anymore, but his show's on it. So we have entire shows on social media. And then classified material, of course. If material is classified, only a limited right to publish the material, you know, is, is there. Some stuff is just better that we don't know, you know. Okay. All right. That's our end of the media PowerPoint. And let me know if you have any questions.